Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 41 of Huel's Gold. What do you think? What do, what, what do you think? First thoughts. Jack London. What do you what do you think? I think of uh the street in Livermore. Okay. <laughs> what do I think? Uh I think of Jack London Square. It's fair. Never even been there. I've only passed on a train. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, the the Amtrak mm-hmm. through Oakland stops right there. Right? Yep. Let's go with yeah. No, it does. Okay. Whatever you say, I'll oh, go okay. with. Okay. Well, Jack London is the name of our episode. He's the name of our subject. It's the name of the state park that we are going to be in all episode long. What do you think of this episode? Not Jack London, the man. Jack London, the episode. I think the intro and outro is the most non-traditional one that we've had. Yeah, because the fact that you just heard the theme song, which is... Who played that? That was uh, Vera Slade. Yeah, I wish that it was... she was playing on Jack London's piano that was given to him by his wife. Yes. I wish it had been the band Slade playing. Oh. So we could have gotten some, like, glam music thrown in the mix here. Instead of, like, piano, oh, it's nice. Okay, thanks, Vera. But, oh, Vera. I think it's Vera. Vera? Because that was Norm's wife, who we never saw on the show, Cheers' name, Vera. Mm. I don't know how that was spelled. But she was the precursor to the concept of the not seeing the wife gag that was run throughout the entirety of Frasier. With? Maris. Maris, yeah. So. The heiress. Maris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jump straight into it. Yeah, like a, yeah, that's where I was. The, the theme was actually played second, and the cold open was the clip. That you're going to hear in a second. Yeah. V weird. Yeah. But whatever. It's Huel's show. We're just here to kind of get you through it. Tell you the the ins and outs of all this craziness we call California's gold. Not a bad theme. I I know I'm joking about Slade, but Vera's good. Better piano player than I'll ever be. Now, here's the real question. Have you ever read any Jack London materials white fang or was it wild thing dude <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> yes <laughs> but just white thing yeah uh I, I, i've never been uh a fiction reader. yeah same uh yeah kinda, i would criticize but i'm in the exact same boat it's the only thing I've I, but i really have tried like i'd I well, wait a to. minute, wait a minute. Because I have the book I have is both Call of the Wild and Wild Fang. White Fang. Now you White got me. Fang. I know, I messed you up. Sorry. <laughs> Which one is the one from the point of view of a dog in a, in a, like a, a snow dog pack? Do we need to look it up already? Yeah. All we do. right, fine. Hold on. This is amazing. That's amazing. Well, that's why it didn't sound familiar because I never read the book. <laughs> yeah, Call of the Wild. So I for sure read that one. I don't remember White Fang really so much. So, Do you know who would be super disappointed in this, in our conversation? Well, probably Jack London. Probably every English teacher that we've had. <laughs> yeah, very true. And my two English teachers in my senior year when I took junior and senior English. <laughs> Good old Highland High School pulling oh, some strings boy. for you. Huh? Woo. Made it happen. Yeah. Well, we need to get right into this thing. So let's let's get into this. You'll... Tell me what you're working with. <laughs> he fought his way out of the factories and waterfront dives of Oakland to become the most popular novelist and short story writer of his day. With such internationally famous works as Call of the Wild, White Fang, and The Sea Wolf. But along with his books and stories, he was also widely known for his personal exploits. You see, he was an honest-to-goodness celebrity, an adventurer, a rascal, a colorful and controversial personality. Jack London traveled all over the world, but the last 11 years of his life, he and his wife Charmian lived in the Sonoma Valley near the little community of Glen Allen on what he called his beauty ranch a ranch that today is the Jack London Historic State Park. 
And in this very special adventure, we'll visit that park. All right, so we're at the State Historic Park, and we got a tour guide. Who is this guy? That is Ranger Greg Hayes. Mm -hmm. So I got some sad news. No, dude. Old Greg. Not old Greg. O-L-E. Old Greg. Yeah. He died in 2014 at 62 of cancer. No way. But he was... He looks so young in this. I know. He, he's a vibrant guy. Is wow. that a way to describe him? Virile. Virile. Okay. I like that. But he was uh, on Jack London's estate, or the National Park, whatever you want to call it. State. Um, historic Park. From 1980 to 2001 oh, with okay. his wife. Oh, they lived on premises. Yeah, they lived on wow. the premises. Uh, so he was. So he got assigned to this region job, or yeah. this job. Yeah, this area. And he was so enamored by Jack London that he enrolled in San. Uh, sorry, in Sonoma State University's uh, Master's of Arts program in literature and specialized in Jack London it's literature. And he wrote a book of poetry called Earth Sweats. Earth sweats. Yes. Okay. That really lends itself to the theme of Greg to me. We're going to get through it a lot. Uh, he has a way with words that is equally, I think it's uh, very poetic and nice, but also really funny. So we'll get <laughs> okay, to it. Okay. We'll get to it. Either way. Greg is right there with us as we start off at the Beauty Ranch, which is what Jack London called his estate of 1,400 acres. 1,400 acres. In Sonoma, dude. Just a mess. So expensive. Yeah, and Greg said that the, it was all dirt cheap farmland back then. So, But then he also said that he spent a lot of money. So I, don't really, I didn't really understand how well, those I two think things... Well, I maybe he spent... A, a, I mean... 1,400 acres is a ton, but I don't know. I I bet he didn't pay a lot for the land itself. There's just this cottage that we start off at that that, along with the many other things we're going to be talking about, maybe that's where the money went. Okay. I don't know. I can guess, I guess see that. But the cottage or the uh, the farmhouse, it doesn't, I don't even know what to call this thing exactly, but either way. This was really the main residence of Jack and his wife. What was it? Her name was, uh, I, th I wrote down Charmaine. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Even though they pronounce it oddly, like Charmian at yeah. different times. Well, it's, it's a few, they say a few different ways. Yeah. Either way, this is where we're starting off. And it's unfortunate because that is actually where Jack London ended off rip <laughs> right there on the porch and here's the first uh instance of greg saying something in such a way such a way he's talking about the porch because it's like an outdoor sleeping porch it's what people did when it was hot to sleep on the porch it's where jack london breathed his last in 1916 <laughs> all right so at that point, we're only, what, like three and a half minutes into the video. Mm -hmm. And I'm already having to pause it to just like take a breath. Not my last, <laughs> thankfully. Hopefully. But it is it is so cool to say something like that to me. Like he breathed his last. He died. He had to pre like or, uh, <laughs> come through. He died. And he did in 1916 at only 40 did you yeah, know this? I didn't know he was that young. I mean, obviously, we only read one of his books each between the two of us, <laughs> but... It's sad. So... I've read more R.L. Stein, like our last episode. Yes. Probably read a hundred of those books. You know that there's got to be some R.L. Stein, like, punny, uh, spooky names based on those books, too, right? Oh, yeah. I don't want to look at it for you. I want everyone listening to go to your local bookstore pick up some rl stein because that was some solid stuff yeah i would say tell me if you agree that rl stein got kids reading in the u.s at least our generation more so than harry potter for sure because harry potter was a bit too 
Like we were a bit too old. Well, it's the maybe? total totally different books. I mean, you can get pick up an R.L. St- Goosebumps, mm-hmm. and you're reading 120 pages, 110 pages. Yeah, dude, you could hammer through that. And teachers, I don't know how it was for you, but I was allowed to write book reports on that. Totally, yeah. So mm-hmm. for sure. I can't believe we talked about R.L. Stein two episodes in a row now. It needs to stop. I, well, the, I don't know. The Goosebumps is on Netflix. The so movie? I, no. <laughs> the series. Oh. Five seasons. <laughs> Not the Jack Black movie? They're making a sequel. <laughs> Obviously, that thing did well. Yeah. Either I haven't way. I have seen it. I'll have to watch it. Yeah. So, okay. Back to Jack London, the actual uh, subject matter we got here. So, Jack London lived on this uh, property, the Beauty Ranch, as he called it, for 11 years. Now, I'm no mathematician, (laughs) but if he died at age 40, that means he bought this giant thing at 29? Yep. You're sure? I'm just going off what I heard. Okay. It's true. Obviously. (laughs) Also, I was wondering, like, okay, well, how old was he when he wrote his two most famous books, the only two we've read? Uh, Yeah, like, only a couple years before this. So he was, like, mid-20s when he's reading these books that are some of the most famous ever. What are we doing with our life? What were we doing with our lives back then is the real question. It's even... Darker of an answer. Oh, yes, yes. (laughs) Well, we're here now, and that's all that matters. And Jack isn't, unfortunately. But we got Huel to kind of give us the lowdown on his house. But I would say his house isn't even what's the most like interesting, cool thing about this area. First off, we got that gi- gigantic tree in his front yard. And this is the kind of... Uh, well, no, not quite. I was going to say this is the kind of landscape that you like, but you like that uh, kind of golden grassy yeah. with the oak trees on it, right? Mm-hmm. This is a live oak. That's why I was thinking that. But This is the Camp Keep song. This is what it's about. I'm letting my xylem flow now as we get, <laughs> <laughs> as we get into what seems to be the most elaborate, extravagant structure on the premises. And that is the stone piggery. The Pig Palace. <laughs> and old Greggy is really into this Pig Palace. We spend more time here than we do in the place that Jack London died. <laughs> we don't even go in there. We hang out all up in the the Pig Palace. Dude, these are where the Duroc Jersey purebreds were. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're not going to watch the episode... You need. We'll explain it a little bit. This is a, a large, round, kind of set of structures. The there's like a outer structure that has these little kind of pig patios, and then little pig pens, all made of um, like river stone, kind of like lava stone or what, whatever they were calling it. But this is like super durable, made to last forever pig pens yeah and then the central feed house in the middle that looks like it looks sturdier than any of the california missions what does greg say he said as long as he was going to take care of pens well he said as long as he was going to take care of animals he might as well take care of pigs as long as he was going to take care of pigs he might as well do it he might as well do it well that was the reasoning (sighs) i guess from jack london whatever greg i like it Whatever Jack wanted to do, he did, apparently. Because he was apparently a very rich man. I didn't really find any, like, wealth statistics on him. But he was, as Huell said in the the first clip, like one of the first major worldwide literary celebrities. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's no J.K. Rowling. <clears throat> she's, like, the first billionaire. Uh, I don't know if she's the billionaire, but she... Her books have made a billion dollars. I don't know the statistic, but I'd have to see the inflation-adjusted wages between between Jack both. And I'm sure her? she's done a lot. Well, I don't know. Reading well, was a more widespread, very much so. Pastime. And Jack was much more prolific than her. Right. We'll get into the the amount that he wrote 
at the end because that's in the credits. But for now, we need to keep with these animals because we're going, we're slam banging through everything. First, we go to the bull exercise machine. Real quick. Like 10 seconds. Wham, bam. It's just a treadmill for a bull of sorts. Basically, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then we go to what Huel calls and Greg confirms is the Valley of the Moon, which was the name of one of his stories. And as you know by now, we did not read that. I don't even know what it's about. Greg kind of says it, but I got to say, it's a little, it makes me a little curious. Because I I guess I should ask this too. Did you like White Fang? I don't want to say no, but it didn't (laughs) spur me to read anymore. So, eh. I liked Call of the Wild because it's an interesting premise. I mean, how often do you read books from the point of view of a dog? Um, but then again, I didn't w- read the book that was literally within the same binding, White Fang. So I guess, I don't know, man. And we're readers, too. We read a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So maybe we'll make it a thing. We got to do it. It's next week. Well, I don't know about that. But hey, busy. either way, we're going to the swimming hole. Another man-made water object. And last week you heard us debating about the beauty of the pit made by that hydraulic mining. This week, what do you think about man-made water structures made by dams, lakes, stuff like that? The person owns the property. I'm for it. <laughs> That's the most Alan answer I've ever heard. <laughs> um. Obviously, there's lots of... What do you think? Well, there's lots of controversy of it, but one of my favorite places wouldn't exist if it didn't happen, which is Lake Isabella. Mm -hmm. But then again, they had to pull up old Kernville. But I like new Kernville, so... Catch-22 here, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's, that's a a tough one. You know, well, the funny part about this is he he says it's a lake. Mm -hmm. Then he calls it a lagoon. Mm -hmm. Then he says it's sort of a big pond. Yeah. Also a swimming hole. Greg, you're all over the place. Which I've never really been able to make that distinction in my mind. I don't think all there is like those. steadfast rules about this. It's kind of, it's not like there's a certain number of gallons that equals a pond versus a lake. Mm-hmm. But yeah, all right. Because like a uh, long time ago, I went on a trip to New England and went to Walden Pond of Henry David Thoreau fame. Uh, that sucker was big. Way bigger than I would have expected. Walked around the whole dang thing. Took forever. Like Ming? Bigger. Like Ming. No. Bigger? Bigger? No. Smaller. Well, I don't know. I don't know how deep it was. It's big, though. It, it, it was big enough where I was kind of... I was done with it. Halfway through the walk. But that's how you got to get around to see where his cabin had been. So... Ended up being worth it, but hmm. it's also like 50 degrees and raining, so whatever. Not complaining. It was an all right thing, <laughs> but either way. But it looks like there were some good times here. There oh, was, at the Beauty Ranch? Well, no, at the... At the, the swimming hole. The, the swimming hole. Big time. But then we can... Maybe we can talk about the not-so-good times. Dude. And the dream home. Oh, you mean... uh you mean the Wolf House? The Wolf House. What was this guy naming all of his things? I, yeah, I don't know. And he's a he's an author. Yeah, the Wolf House man. That was. Well, there's not a lot of clips here because this is kind of a just single Huel and Greg just walking around. Not a lot of uh, exposition in the voiceover. So we'll just tell you what he says. The Wolf House was a four story uh, stone building that. Charmaine, Charlemagne, what was her name? Charlemagne? What was her name? <laughs> Charmaine. Charmaine <laughs> and Jack were having built during those 11 years that they lived what there. Was it three, and, three years they yeah. spent designing, building and designing it? Uh-huh. And that, that puppy burned. When did it burn? When did it burn? Ooh. I didn't write that down. One month before they were set That's to move right. in. Yeah. 
And that was one sad bit of the house. The second sad bit is they wanted to fill it full of children. Dude, this is what I had next. And it turns <laughs> out Jack and uh, Charmaine couldn't have kids. Well, Greg, once again, has a way with words. And as he's talking about all the big rooms in the house that could have been that they had built for all their many children to run around in. And unfortunately, that dream went up in smoke, just like their house. (laughs) (laughs) Greg is on fire with the quotes. This is a wordsmith. So far. The funny part about this is at this point, Greg and Huel are walking up to the house, or like the ruins of the house of sorts. And at this point, I feel like I thought it was just them on the premises. I thought this was closed off at this point. Like, yeah. this was before it had opened to the public or something. And then they're going up the stairs, and this lady just peeks over the top. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see her. At first, I thought, like, oh, shoot, someone broke in. But no, it is totally open to the public. There's just not a lot of people wherever they were had been filming. But now we're at. I guess this is like the big coup de gras here, the 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 wolf house. So we got some fellow tourists. Now, did you get the okay? Have you ever been to Hearst Castle? Sad to say, no. Okay, I just went for the first time earlier this year, around Aaron's birthday, and Jack London is kind of giving me a Hearsty vibe. In that he's built, he buys this big chunk of property where, as far as your eye can see, I own all this. And then he's building this giant palace in the middle of nowhere kind of a thing on a smaller scale. Because, yeah. you know, Hearst, have Hearst money. He has no, money, no. but not Hearst money. Hearst had like many square miles as opposed to square like acres. Plus, the castle versus this big rock house. Yeah, four stories, cool, but like... Come on. You know. Plus, Hearst wasn't uh, letting his things burn down. But they did intend to rebuild the house. Yeah. But well, Je- did you really get that impression, though? I mean, sort of. It, I don't think Greg did. Well, Jack died three years later. Yeah. Did you happen to look up how he died? No. Did okay. you? Okay, yeah. Because you, someone dies at 40, you gotta imagine it's not going to be the nicest of things and basically there's debate over it because there's this the the side that thinks that he had illnesses like multiple illnesses going on which he did he did have that which i believe it was weird uh, illnesses that him and his colleagues got while down in the south islands or the south seas is what they keep calling it so he was get he, he had like dysentery and all this uh, he had scurvy once and all these things that had racked up and that he was on morphine in the end. But then there's a school of thought, I guess, or just theory, that thinks that he committed suicide with that morphine. Some people think it's the illness, some people think it's the morphine. Oh, but the morphine was present in both. Well, I guess morphine yeah. was either treating the illness or he killed himself with it. Yeah. Huh. It's a fine line, and you From know, love and hate. Yeah, it's over a hundred years ago, so we'll never know. <laughs> anyway, uh, his wife lived so much longer than he did, dude. Like half her life long. Yeah, like she died in the nineteen fifties, mm-hmm. and she built another house on the premises that looks very reminiscent of what the the Wolf House was supposed to be. But what she called this one. I don't remember. House of Happy Walls. House of Happy Walls. Okay, well, there you so go. So I think that says a lot about their personalities. His house was the wolf house, <laughs> and hers was the house of happy walls. But that one did get finished. She lived in it a long time. She died in it. And now it's the offices. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. But well, whatever. So, Do you think it's sort of weird that she kept up the burnt down house, the burnt down house, as like this odd monument to like him? If she went down the street or down the driveway, she would have seen 
Yeah. Reminded her of the life they could have had. Mm -hmm. Yep. All the the non-existent children that went up in smoke. Ugh. (laughs) Okay. So in this house, there is a pretty cool thing. It's the first time Huel is getting to see this. Won't be the last. It is basically Jack London's office as it was, in state, just untouched since he since he died it is how it is so you know in a way because this was actually his office as it was in the cottage up front they moved it to the back house and they're gonna move it back up front to the main house or the cottage house when it gets renovated so sort of kind of but he will obviously like this idea because he saw it again because we've been there to the Cesar Chavez Memorial mm-hmm. in, uh, what is that? It's a Keen. Keen, that's it. And they have his office. His son had his office recreated exactly behind glass so you could see what it looked like. And now, if you go to the California's Gold Hulhauser exhibit at Chapman University in the Leatherby Libraries, you get to see Hule's office just the same. Nice. And, okay. There's a number of things that are interesting to look at in this office. One is this uh, this record player. It's a gramophone. It's like the kind that you see that, well, it's a Grammy now. Like the award trophy <laughs> is this thing. Greg said it's all beat up because they had taken it to the South Seas so that Jack could soothe the natives. I didn't really get what he meant by soothe the natives. Like, they were really aggro and he had to calm them (laughs) down. Or he just wanted to show them some cool Dixieland jams or something. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think when he brought that uh, Grammy down there... (laughs) Do you think that's when he, you know, got dysentery? And totally. It was that trip. No, I don't know. But I'm going to go with yes. But also, you can get dysentery here. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's living in this, you know, kind of swampy area. I just got just got it here at the at the beauty ranch. So in the office, there's also a globe Which Huell mentions, like, oh, Jacqueline in office wouldn't be complete without a globe. Already kind of a weird thing to say. Like, why? So, it's fine. It's it's a thing to say. (laughs) Greg says, well, yeah, he needs a globe to see where he's going to go the next day. (laughs) In the early 1900s, I don't think he's jet-setting all over the world in a day. Seeing as it probably took him a year to get to the South seas where he maybe got dysentery. I don't know. Again, what did they call it though? He doesn't, he calls it a globe, but he also calls it a spot jumper. What was it? What? I didn't catch that. Hold on. Let's check it out. Let's check it. Hold on. This is amazing. 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 No, that was Greg. Yeah. Called him a globe hopper. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is true. I mean, Jack London did go all over the world. So I guess he needed a, he needed that globe after all. And then that's kind of it. Right? Well, his ashes are buried oh, that's under uh, that's really quick though. There's a, a rejected volcano stone that wasn't used on the house and he's just his ashes are buried underneath it. Okay. So this is the last time Greg says something that I just it would kind of like make me think about this more than what he was actually talking about if I was getting a tour from him. The the rejected part of that. Like, oh, this isn't good enough for my house. Let's just use it for my forever house in the ground <laughs> instead. Like, I d- It's a weird, a weird way to weird. say it. Yeah. But Greg's an interesting guy. R.I.P. Greg. I wish that we could have gone on a tour of this place with him. Unfortunately, can't. You can't. But maybe him and Jack are hanging out. 
There you go. You like that? That's and the way to say it. How did they say his wife's name? We we called her Charmaine the whole show, but it was yeah. But we were just looking at that last clip up. Is Charmian? Charmian. I, I don't can, know. I, I feel I can't say it right. Either way, she lived on the old uh, Happy Acres. What was this place called again? Beauty Ranch. <laughs> Beauty Ranch. Happy Walls. There you go. Happy Walls. Happy Walls. Beauty Ranch. She lived there way more or way longer than old Jack did. I think it should be called the Charmian London. Is that her name? Or just the, the London Ranch. There you go. That's good enough. Um, what's her name? You know what? It is spelled oddly. I'm just looking it up. It's not Charmaine like you would think Charmaine would be because it's C H A R M I A N. There's no pronunciation given on Wikipedia. Her maiden name was Charmian Kittridge, though. Okay. Charmian. Yeah. There it is. There it is. And there it was. That's the show. <laughs> That's the whole show. This was a really kind of, what would you call it? Like a... a wham, bam. Yeah, it was like single focus. There wasn't a lot of jumping around, going all over the place. It was just one place. And this really became kind of the the way the the show continued to be for many years after. Yep. Like, not quite. Like, we still got a lot of episodes that multiple segments, varied subject matter within one very loosely formed theme. Speaking of themes, we got a theme for next week. What do we got? We got California companies. What do you think? Okay. Do you uh, do you know at all which companies they are? You nope. didn't look it up yet? Nope. Okay. What are two solid California companies that you think are worthy of a California's Gold episode? Like newer companies, older companies, anything. But like, you know, statewide companies. Statewide companies. Let's Even see. something that's nationwide but started here. I would say in and out and Disneyland. Yeah. Not those. <laughs> I mean, he I guess did Disney. Do it. Disney would be. Well, Disney started, started here. in California, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess. Maybe technically. Second guess myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. No, not even close on these episodes. There is the in, the famous In and Out episode that we need to do sometime we'll soon. We'll bring Kathleen on for that one. Totally. She's got some great stories on that, but no, the two companies that we're learning about next week are the Studebaker Car Company. We have an old Studebaker shop. Here in Bakersfield. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, it's funny that Studebaker d- started before cars even existed. We'll learn more about that next week. But there's also Levi Strauss. Oh, wow. Yeah. The big boy, Levi. Nice. You're not a big fan. You're more of a Strangler man. Yeah, I'm a Strangler man. What are you going to do? Old uh, Levi's don't fit me well. What do you want me to say? Old Johnny Wrangler is more your guy, I guess. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a good one. This was a good one. The next one will be a good one. They're all you've already good. said that. We're all good. So should we get on out of here? Let's do it. All right. Let's jump out of here. We hope you come along with us next week and every week as we continue our search for... Skill. This was going to be home, and this is actually where he and his wife Charmian set up housekeeping. Um, their sleeping porch is here on the front, his writing den off to the left, and it's actually in this front porch that he uh, breathed his last. This is where he died in 1916 at the really? rather young age of 40. <laughs>